Hello photographers, direct support for these videos comes from sales of my video courses or the use of my affiliate links, all of which can be found down in the description. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Sony's A7 III in manual mode. Now, the very first thing you have to do is actually put the camera in manual mode. If you look at your mode dial, by default, the mode dial comes set to P, which stands for program auto. We want full control over the camera in manual mode. So you need to switch this dial from P to M. And once you're in manual mode, you unlock full control of your camera. Now with full control, there's a bunch of different settings and you need to know what those settings are set to. And you get that information from your display. Now you can see your display in one of two places. You can see it on the back of the camera, which you actually can't see here because I'm recording this so you can see it on the screen, or you see it in the viewfinder. But you can customize this display. This is the clean display that I prefer, but if you look at the back of the camera, you have this dial here, which is also buttons. You can spin this, and then the top, bottom, left, and right are buttons. And the top button is marked display, D-I-S-P. And if you press that button, you'll see that the display changes. I pressed it once, and now you can see up on there, I have a histogram that gives me information about the exposure of my image. If I press it again, it adds a level. If I press up again, it gives me a a full informational display with no image preview. This is great because you can see everything, but if you wanna see the image, then you do have to look through your viewfinder, actually see what the camera is looking at when you compose your shot. And then if you press it again, it gives you this preview with information down the left and right sides as well as the bottom. I personally don't like this one because it's too cluttered. The one that I prefer is actually this right here. I like a clean, simple interface. So once you've chosen your preferred display, you can actually go ahead and start setting your settings and taking your photos. And the very first setting we're going to look at is the ISO setting. Now you can access the ISO setting one of two ways. The quickest and easiest way to access it is by using the ISO button. And when you press that, it brings up the ISO menu along the left-hand side of the display, and then you just spin this dial in order to go ahead and select whichever ISO you want to use. Now keep in mind that when you are in manual mode, you can give some control back to the camera by using the auto ISO function. So we're just gonna set our ISO to ISO 100 as a starting point. And once you've chosen the ISO that you wanna use, just press the center button on the back of the camera to confirm that choice. Now, you want to be able to change your aperture. Now, if you're not familiar with the aperture is, it's the opening inside of the lens that controls how much light is able to get into the camera. Now, if you've looked at your camera, you'll notice that you have a number of different control dials. We already use this one on the back here to change the ISO. There's another one right up here, and there's one more right up front, which is right near where your finger rests when you're holding the camera up front. This front dial is how you change the aperture when you are working in manual mode. If you spin this dial, you'll see that F number on the bottom changing. That F number is the number that represents the aperture setting. And if you're not familiar, the smaller the number, the larger the lens opening is in the camera. And the bigger the number, the smaller that opening is. Now the next setting you wanna be able to change is your shutter speed. And that is accessed with that rear dial right there near where your thumb rests. So if you spin that dial, you'll see the shutter speed number changing. And that one is also right along the bottom there. And this is a measurement of time. So when you see something like this, 1 50th, that means the shutter speed is set to 1 50th of a second. So that's how you change your shutter speed. These controls are really nice and easy, but changing them doesn't give you the picture. You have to set your settings, and to do that, you use your exposure indicator. So do you see that plus 2.0 number that's flashing on the screen right now? What that's telling me is that the image is going to be overexposed by two stops. This exposure indicator is a guide to help us understand if our image will be under or overexposed based on our camera settings. And generally speaking, what you do is you set your ISO aperture and shutter speed to bring that number to zero. So I'm going to go ahead and change my shutter speed and make my shutter speed faster to let in less light until that number says zero. So as I keep going up and letting in less and less light, it stops blinking. Now when it's blinking, what it's telling you is that it is far outside of the range that can show you. The maximum number it can show you here is plus two, but this number might be at plus five or plus six or plus seven. So when you see your indicator flashing like that, Keep going, even if it isn't changing, because eventually, as long as you're going in the right direction, it will start to change. And as you can see here, 
By the time I get to around 1 15th of a second, it brings the exposure indicator all the way down to zero. Now I am gonna flip over for a moment to the full informational display so you can see the other way your exposure indicator can appear. Do you see that graph underneath the M? That graph shows you your exposure indicator range. So let's go ahead and set our shutter speed to that really slow shutter speed again and see how that little arrow is moving above the exposure indicator. That's telling you how over or underexposed the image is going to be. You still get the plus or minus number at the far right, but this graph can also be helpful. Now there are other settings you may wanna change while in manual mode. Things like your focus settings, your metering mode, your white balance, and other stuff like that. And those settings are also pretty easily accessible. First of all, we have a couple of custom buttons on the top of the camera, C1 and C2. So we're gonna start with the C1. If you press the C1 button, it brings up your white balance setting. And then if you spin the dial on the back of the camera, that same dial that we use to change the ISO, you can cycle through the different white balance settings and choose the one that you prefer. Now, if we press custom button two on the top, that allows you to change the focus area. I am currently set to expanded flexible spot. An expanded flexible spot allows you to set a single focus point and move it with this little joystick on the back. The other way to access a bunch of other settings is on the back, pressing this function button. The FN button brings up this full quick menu on the back of the camera. And what this gives you access to is a number of different settings. The first setting here is the drive mode. That's whether or not the camera is going to take one photograph when you press the shutter button or a number of photographs in burst mode or if you're going to use the self timer or one of these other settings. Now to get into this, I press the center button to access that menu. Let me press function to bring it back up. I press that center button and that brings up the options. But the other thing you should know is while you're on the highlighted option, you can spin the rear control dial to just cycle through the options and choose what you want without having to press or confirm anything. So by selecting that, I can press the center button and now we're all set. The next option is your focus mode. And again, you can just spin the dial to choose a different focus mode. We'll set it to autofocus single shot. And then we'll confirm that by pressing the center button. You also have access to your focus area here. Next is exposure compensation, but you'll notice that that option is actually grayed out. Now the reason it's grayed out is because you're in manual mode and you're controlling all of the camera settings, the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed. And it means exposure compensation is just you choosing your settings. However, there is an instance where you can use exposure compensation while shooting in manual mode. And that is if you set your ISO to the auto setting. Now you'll notice just to the right of exposure compensation is the ISO. And since we're here, we're just going to use this option to change it. Again, I'm just spinning the back dial and we're going to set it to auto. And as soon as we do, take a look at that. Now the exposure compensation option is activated which means I can tell the camera to over or underexpose the image by changing this setting here. If I tell it I want the image to be brighter than it is choosing using the auto ISO, then I can set this by spinning the dial until it's at plus one. Now, there's another way you can change the exposure compensation. And honestly, this is the way I would recommend you do it. And that is using this dial right here on the top of the camera. This dial is great because it is visible and you can see where it is at. So your exposure compensation dial works or the menu option works here. But if you've used the dial, you can't then use the menu until you set the dial back to zero. After ISO, you have the metering mode, and then down below, we have a number of different options as well. So let's scroll back over here. We have the flash mode, which you don't have to worry about unless you're using flash. Flash exposure compensation, which you also do not have to worry about unless you are using a flash. And then your white balance setting. Now I mentioned that your custom buttons up here give you access to your white balance, but you can also get it here. And then next we have the creative style. I would leave that alone. And then finally here, this is your memory card setup area. So if you wanna quickly change how your images are being saved to your memory card, because you have two slots here, you can access that right here from the quick menu. All right, so that is how you use the Sony a7 III in manual mode. If you wanna learn how to use your camera to take amazing photos, if you wanna learn in depth about manual mode, ISO, aperture, shutter speed, the metering mode, and these other things that I was talking about, check out my video course right here. If you wanna do that kind of YouTube stuff to help me out, like, subscribe, whatever, go right ahead, but make sure you take some damn photos.